What's going on guys? So I got approval for the condenser motor replacement. It had to go through, um, had to go through a couple people, but I finally got it. Uh, I diagnosed it. I'm going to put the link up here, uh, for the video that I diagnosed it. It's the one that had, uh, the earbud or auxiliary cable or something wrapped around it and burn it up. So, uh, we're going to head over there and put that motor in right now. Stay tuned. All right, guys, there was a lot of wind noise and um, vehicle noise passing by on this one, so I figured I'd do a voiceover, but, um, yep, we're just getting our uh, zip ties cut, cut off here now so we can uh, get those wires pulled and that motor out. So we got a wire on our capacitor, fan side of our capacitor, a uh, wire on our load side of the contactor, and we're going to have a wire on the... Um, line side of our contactor too. So we're going to get all those pulled off of there. Uh, we're going to get them straightened out so we can pull um, the, the fan guard, which has got the fan mounted to it. All right, so we got that pulled off there and we're just going to get the blade taken off now. We're going to loosen the set screw right here, a couple turns, and then we should be able to loosen that by hand. Yep. Now that that's loosened by hand, we're going to leave it in there though, so it's uh, we don't lose that set screw. All right, and it didn't come right out, so what I usually like to do is I'll put my wrench right there, find the flat spot of the shaft, and then once uh, you'll use that for holding the, the shaft in place once I get my hand out of the way, then you can take your hand and just rock it back and forth and pull it right off. So that's usually how I like doing those with the short shaft on it. All right, here we are. We're gonna take these bolts out. We're gonna get this old motor out of the way and we're gonna mount the new one. So that motor smelled really bad. It burnt up pretty bad. All right, so here's our new motor. I like to go back OEM whenever possible uh, because, you know, rescue motors or universal motors are fine, but uh, the OEM was available here, so figured I'd go back with it. Even though it is OEM, it is a little bit bigger though. You can see it's taller than that other motor. Um, I sent Carrier a picture of that data plate right there because I did not have a data plate on my unit. So this is what they gave me though. Um, all things considered, all the uh, other parameters lined up, uh, horsepower, amperage, uh, voltage and stuff, all that lined up. So, so we're good. All right, we're just gonna tighten the new bolts uh, back down on the new motor and um, once we get that in there yeah you see here the set screw was almost at the very tip of that shaft and compensating for the longer motor here I dropped uh, my blade down about a half of an inch uh, three quarters of an inch um, I, I dropped it down to compensate for that and we're gonna make sure it lines up good with the fan shroud once we get it in there we're just making sure it's spinning free here and it's not hitting the base of the motor. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave the motor flipped upside down on top of the unit so we can fish our wires uh, through our hole there. So we're gonna get our wires put through that hole and then we're gonna get them put through the hole that goes through into the control panel there and then get them hooked back up. All right, so you see here, we got them fished through there with the motor still upside down. And then here in a minute, we're gonna flip it back up, uh, push our conduit through the hole and, uh, and pull them in. So, um, we, and then once we do that, we wanna make sure we put a fastener on there, some sort of zip tie or something. All right, you see now we're flipped back over now, we're in place and uh, we're checking to make sure our blade is not gonna hit our wires. That's why I said it's very important to zip tie those back so those wires don't come loose and you risk um, your fan blade chopping into those wires. So we're gonna, once we get all these, uh, these wires put back, we're gonna make sure we put a good amount of zip ties on them to keep them in place uh, so they don't work their way free. All right, so this capacitor actually tested good. This is the capacitor that was on there, but we're still gonna change it anyway because anytime you do a motor, you wanna do a capacitor too. Um, if it's just a single capacitor, then just do a single, but this one is a dual. So we want to make sure we, uh, we replace a dual capacitor. Um, 
just like any time you do a compressor, you want to do a capacitor. And every time I do a compressor, I also do a contactor too. Anytime you do that, you want to replace all the star components um, associated with that piece of equipment. All right, we got our new cap in, which is a 45.5. Our ratings are covered by the bracket, so I wanted to make sure I printed that on there. All right, and we're just about to restore power to the unit and make sure everything comes back on. Yep, looks like it started running good. We're just going to keep an eye on it for a couple more minutes um, and check it out. All right, so yeah, this thermostat wire was kind of flopping around and considering all the foot traffic that goes back there, I figured I'd I'd put a zip tie on it so it's not, it, it doesn't get caught on anything else. So, and check this out. Those refrigeration lines go underground. I don't know why they needed to do that, but they did, so... They go underground, and then the air handler, or it's a gas furnace uh, with a coil on top, sits in a closet there. So, all right, we got our um, thermostat wire zip tied to our piece of conduit there. Um, it's good and out of the way now, good and fastened. We're feeling our refrigeration lines here. We're, we're pretty cold there. I think we're good. All right, well, that's the end of this one, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'm off to the next one.